Okay, so let's start. Welcome to the study. Welcome for the people online. I hope you can hear well. No, please send a message on the chat so that check the hardware and fix it. Um, so I will be uh, brief today because I have just five minutes. Self and, and the workshop. So welcome. First, I'm Giuseppe Quaranta, a professor at Politecnico di Milano, working in autocraft aeromechanics. And together with Hamdi Salam from Yasa, we organized this workshop on uh, simulation. So, all, more and more uh, models are uh, developed. The technology in terms of modeling uh, getting very, very high with a lot of capabilities. Right now we talk about digital twins, so uh, food replica say, in the medical world of the, uh, of the aircraft uh, developed. Uh, we are able to develop flight mechanics model, structural models, CFD models. Uh, but, um, and, and we rely on the information that are given to us by, by those models. Uh, but we want to really uh, exploit this capability of modeling, sure that the quality of this model is good enough to give us the right information. Um, when we talk about rotocraft, the complexity of the model is very high. We have a lot of different subsystems that participate together the simulation in order to give us the result. So we are not only sure that a single element correctly represented, but also that the different subsystems are connected together in the right way and they are working in the right way. So the problem of verification and validation of models is um, very, very uh, complex and difficult. And when we talk about flight simulation, we have to consider in the picture also the fact that the, the pilot joined the simulation. So we need to have an environment where all the elements related to perceptual fidelity, and so to visual cues, audio cues, motion cues, uh, instrumental uh, doing, etc., uh, etc., et are correctly represented in order to give feedback of what is happening to the pilot and allow him or her to uh, perform the correct simulation as the real flight condition as much as possible as the real. So, it Objective of the meeting going to of the workshop we're going to have today discuss uh, knowledge and what are the best practices in terms of technologies and methodologies that can deliver the best results of models in the different fields. So it's it's gonna be a, a cross field workshop and also talk about methodologies for validation and, and in the end try to understand how can we show the feasibility of the models of the systems we are building so that we have quite the information given by the simulation and exploit it for their job. I'll go directly to the agenda. So, Hamdi will, will talk after me with the uh, better introduction than myself. Then we will have a first presentation by Leonardo Helicopter, um, a, a presentation by Stefan Van Tov on the application of protocol uh, to certification. The objective of for one coordinating. Then we're going to have the coffee break upstairs. And then we will continue with 
like the rest of the program here. Punch speed at 12.30, there's the game. Then we are going to have a, an afternoon session. In the afternoon session, some of the speakers will be from online. Uh, so uh, Marilena Pavel will be connected online. Uh, Jason Rios uh, in science will be online and also the people will be connected online. Uh, and we will continue after a coffee break at 3 p.m. until 5.45. Then we will have a wrap up discussion and then we close. If you want to put questions, of course, for the people here in the room, you can directly uh, give your questions. For the people online, you can use. I would like to introduce uh, the topics of the, of today. Uh, so uh, I will try to be fairly quick because we already had this presentation here. So the main topics is going to be uh, simulation and modeling for conventional aircraft, uh, simulation and modeling for uh, certification credits for uh, novel aircraft, simulation and training, uh, shift of focus, the FCS concept, and new simulation technologies. So these are the main topics. Uh, so we went through the background, uh, how uh, we see more and more the use of uh, simulation in both the uh, certification and training uh, domain, and how in order to enable that, we need also to define what are the credits, uh, both for certification and training credits. So, um, simulation modeling has always been used for conventional uh, uh, aircraft. Uh, I think I skipped the slide with you. So, we, uh, we, we've used the MOC4 for system integration testing, uh, test rigs, uh, and avionics. Performance prediction, human factors evaluation has already been, uh, uh, let's say, done on uh, uh, simulation. Uh, power of landings, we've done that for dual engine aircrafts, uh, rotorcrafts, and of course, uh, we're going to go into more details with the ROCKS uh, activity with, uh, with Giuseppe and the other ones from ROCKS. So, uh, on the uh, novel part, we discussed about the handling qualities uh, rating method uh, using uh, uh, a follow to the loop simulation uh, for the reasons of not being feasible or maybe too dangerous from a flight test point of view, and we also came out with a uh, uh, with the MOC2, uh, the uh, MOC VTOL 2500 Bravo, uh, which is overarching uh, guidance for uh, certification credit for simulation uh, and rig test. We use the older version. Um, we then went with the uh, training needs. Uh, we discussed about the rulemaking task 196. Uh, the update of F STD requirements, uh, how it's shifting the focus from the uh, ICE to the training, and uh, Eric is probably going to give us much more insight about that. The scenario based, uh, in my opinion, is very important, not only for the conventional uh, aircraft, some scenario can only be trained in the simulator, like, for example, we had the presentation of the inadvertent IMC entry for the Airbus during the symposium. But especially for the VTOLs, as they will be operating in an urban air environment, and the, the scenario based training will be more and more important. What is the new technologies which are uh, used for uh, both certification and training uh, domain? We have recently qualified Robinson 22 uh, virtual reality based uh, simulator. The 350 version is uh, also on the short uh, final. There are a lot of potential capabilities with this uh, uh, technology because the big the big challenge with the rotorcraft in the low airspeed domain with the conventional domes is something which I guess everybody in this room uh, knows about and maybe with VR and the mixed reality uh, some uh, shortcomings may be. We probably have uh, some presentations also about uh, mixed reality, so we, we may understand what are the say advantages or disadvantages between that and, and the virtual reality. The biggest challenge I see from uh, my point of view is uh, how to uh, simulate the ambient conditions. And this is both in the certification and in the in the training. Uh, for the certification side, we developed the modified handling qualities rating method, but we are still missing the model of the ambient condition in urban. 
I know there are some studies uh, being done, but still we need to find, let's say, a standard on which uh, we own the wheel. And also on the trading side, uh, as I said, because these uh, beetles are uh, expected to be very easier to fly uh, respect to a conventional rotorcraft, the training would probably going to be more focused on the scenario, okay, how to handle the operations, how to handle the, let's say, the contingencies, not really on the aircraft uh, point of view, but more on the operations. Okay, so that was my introduction. Uh, we're going to go more into details in the many of these topics. Uh, so because we are a bit late, uh, maybe we can go directly to the next. Thank you very much. Thank you, Henry.